I want to talk to you about relationships, particularly the subject of marriage. I was talking to a young man this evening on the subject, and a few things came to mind, five at least, that I want to share with you. Now, before I begin, I do not claim to be an expert whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I contribute hardly any credit to the fact that my wife and I have stayed together. I have stayed married to one another for nearly 16 years, and we've been together for close to 20 altogether. Shortly after we were married, we moved away 468 miles to be exact away for my job, and we stayed away from our hometown for quite a while. And that taught me the first thing that I want to tell you about staying married. So anyone can get married, but staying married is altogether another thing. And that first thing is this. Learn to work through it, whatever it is. I'm telling you, when you're 500 miles away and you live from the place that you've grown up in and you live in a completely new climate, a new environment, people that you hardly even know that you're working with and all this sort of thing, you can't afford to stay mad at each other for long or else you have no one there in your corner. So my wife, for me, has become more than my wife. She's my close counsel, my confidant. She's my friend. We help one another. We rely on one another. We want to be with one another. And this leads to the second thing that I want to tell you, and that is celebrate the wins together. Celebrate the wins together. The big wins, the anniversaries, the small wins, working through things, celebrate those things together. We've never done a girl's night out where she goes and takes off or a guy's night out where I go and take off or, you know, I golf with the boys on Saturday morning or, you know, Saturday appointments for her or whatever, beauty appointments or to have her nails done with the gals or any of that. We've just never done those things. Um, they've popped up from time to time, but we've just never decided to do them. When we go out and we spend our resources on entertainment, we just prefer to do those things together, which piggybacks off that first one. If you work through it, whatever it is, then you want to be together, which leads to the third thing, and that's communication. Now, communication is probably the greatest illusion that's amongst mankind, right? To quote someone who I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But communication is, it is huge. And in communication, you have to learn to spell out and keep, can stay consistent. We live in a world filled with millions of ways to communicate, yet it still doesn't happen from time to time with the person who we're supposed to love the most, and that's our wife or your husband. So communication is key. You have to stay on top of communication and make sure you over communicate as well. Don't leave anything to chance. Don't leave anything to assumption. And that leads to the fifth thing. And the fifth thing is fight fair. Yes, there will be times when you need to fight for something. There will be times when you need to argue your point. But learn to do that fairly. Learn to do that in a way that doesn't um, demean or downgrade your spouse or even lose any of your own personal integrity. Learn to fight fair. Learn to fight like an adult. Don't fight like a child. Don't just throw things out there. So in your communication, go over the top, communicate, and as well, learn to fight fair. Learn to argue. Which leads to the fifth thing. See how these piggyback off one another? Take ownership when you're wrong. As well, take ownership when you've been wronged. Men, when we get offended, when we get hurt, 
we tend to respond with anger. Women, when they get hurt, or when they get angered, rather, seem to tend to respond with hurt, with those sorts of emotions. So we both get it backwards. And when we take ownership for our own emotions, and when we take ownership for what we've contributed to a situation going awry, or what we've contributed to something not getting paid on time, or, oh my gosh, I forgot to pick up the kids, now I'm late. Whatever those things are, those small things, when we take ownership, all it does is it just communicates to our spouse, hey, I'm imperfect, I need help, and you know what, I'm still committed to this thing because I'm showing my vulnerabilities, I'm communicating my vulnerabilities, I'm being open to take ownership when I've failed. And at the same time in this, and I want to piggyback on something as well. When you celebrate those wins, make sure to encourage, I suppose this is the bonus round, make sure to encourage your spouse. And make sure to find those things in your spouse and keep pointing out those things that you love about her or you love about him. Stay in love with your spouse. And that's the way that I think you stay in love is you choose to see the good in the other person and not just the wrong. Yes, when there's a great offense, call that out. Fight fair. Communicate well. Argue like an adult. Do that. But as well, on the flip side, in order to make that thing a lasting love for a lifetime and for the journey ahead, man, find those things that you just love about your spouse. Why did you fall in love with her or with him? And what's kept you in love? How have you shown, how have you seen one another grow? Well, that's a lot for now, but as we get into this thing together, I hope that you find this helpful, and I hope that you're encouraged in your relationship.